Welcome to Shekinah. We hope you enjoy this message by Chris Watterson. All right. So guess what? We're at the end of a chapter. In this book right here. So I'm summarizing. Which means I can do anything I want. So... I have a theme. It's called Emancipation. Anybody want to give a definition of Emancipation? Emancipation Proclamation. Where that word came from. Abraham Lincoln. I'll give you the exact defin dictionary definition. The process of being set free from legal social or political restrictions. Mm. A lot of times we think of the Emancipation Proclamation where the slaveries were freed from legal ownership of people, right? So my my themes today are going to take take you into threes. One, two, three. So if you want to write things down when I start and say, okay, here's three things. You can write one, two, three, and I'll go through each one of them. So there's several of them. But first, just in these definitions of legal, social, and political emancipation, uh, sometimes we need freedom from more than just you know that that term that we think of from the proclamation. Sometimes in legal emancipation, we want to be free from debt, mm -hmm. right? Or if we're in jail from incarceration. What about social freedom? I changed schools when, when I was in the middle of middle school from one small school district to a larger one. So let me tell you, I can tell you there's a lot of social emancipation that's necessary when you move to a school and you sit down at the table and everyone says, no, you can't sit there, that's for those people. <laughs> Things like that, right? You don't feel very free. You don't know what all the rules are, right? Uh, there's also social emancipation from Facebook, other social things that people uh, use, right? Or misuse. And then there's political freedom, where we get put in stereotypes if we're one way or another way, right? Is there such a thing as a conservative Democrat or a liberal Republican? You know, everyone says, no, this is conservative, that's liberal, whatever. People are put in the people groups. And sometimes we do that with each other. And I, and I thought back to what some of the messages were with this chapter. And, and one of them was one that Jerry gave about um, his history. And that, that was... Uh, um, I guess you'd say one, we want to recognize that that is an exact situation of where people can get stereotyped into several things and locked in. And so what is our job? I want to read Acts 15 because this is one of the major themes of what we're going to go through today with there's trouble right there in River City at the local church. In Acts 15, it was so an argument. In the midst of doing good. Okay? This is, I'm going to read Acts 15, verses 35 through 41. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. Then, after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit our brethren in every city where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them and 
Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God, and he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So when you think of um, Paul and Barnabas, you know, Paul wrote most of the New Testament, there's an issue here. <laughs> What's going on? Right? And I'm going to go through a whole series of, uh, of items of what we do when, when we come across this where we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay? But let's, let's go first, since we're right there, close by. This is Paul and Barnabas having an issue, right? Yeah. Now, if you remember Saul, or Paul, before that was Saul, he was doing what? He was killing Christians. He was dragging them into places, having them arrested, right? Let's go back to Acts 9. And it was true, Mark had departed from them. You know, he, he expected someone to do, and Paul wanted someone to do ministry with him at times. And Paul, or Mark at one point said, no, I'm going in uh, Acts 15, so I'm going back to Jerusalem. But in Acts 9, let me read verses 26 and 27 after Paul's conversion. Because remember, he was con converted on the road to Somewhere else, he wasn't in Jerusalem, but when he back, went back, there were issues. And in verse 26, it says, And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly, at Damascus in the name of Jesus. That's verses 26 and 27 of Acts 9. So already, something sets my mind here. <laughs> Paul had a, a little helper there, didn't he? Someone said, I'm going to speak for you. And then he was okay, and he got taught there in Jerusalem, went out, and did his evangelism. But then, when there's another person at hand who didn't want to help out with ministry, he has a contention with the same guy that defended him <laughs> a little while earlier, right? So there's contentions, right, that can happen. So let's, let's figure out where these things come from, or maybe uh, who this Mark is and why he did what he did. And we don't know, because it's not in here, but I'm going to make some things up. Um. <laughs> All right. But the, the important thing, I, I think, from, from what Paul's coming from and Jesus talked about in the Bible, it does say, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because there are two other choices. And one is good. One is you can, you can say no and end up doing it anyway. But the, one of the worst things is if you say yes and then you don't do it. Yeah. And see, it can be simple and as, as, as simple as helping someone move. Mm -hmm. You know, on two Saturdays, I need help moving. Can you come help? Yes, I can't. No, I can't. That's fine. At least you know. And if the no ends up showing up, it's like, hey, that's great. We thought they were a no. But if someone says yes and they don't and they were half your crew, you figure, oh, we're going to work a press and what am I going to do? You know, it's not a good situation. All right, so that's why you know. Let, let your words be known and, and let it be done, and that's why Paul might have had an issue with Mark because he said, "Hey, I'm going back to Jerusalem. Maybe you had a girlfriend or something. Who knows?" Um, but he he obviously Paul felt he needed victory over darkness, right? Because he wasn't going to take him along and 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 try to help build up these new churches he had built along the way. Um, but at the same time, here's, here's my first three things. If you feel yourself you're being, you know, condemned about something or question, um, 
maybe you need to look and see if you have issues. Okay? The first one is, is fear. Um, sometimes we, we tell people because we're bad. Um, and, and we think of people, we judge people, whatever, that, you know, well, you, well, you've done such horrible sins. You know, you ever going to go along going to church like they did with Saul and Paul, you know? How can this person ever make it? And so some people believe, well, I, 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 can't, I can't ever do that. You know, God, God doesn't like me. You know, I, I did horrible things. That's, that's what redemption is all about, right? Redeeming. We have to let people know that. So that's number one. Some people have an issue because of fear. I don't think maybe that's what Mark's issue might have been. Um, sometimes uh, there was a bitter experience that took place, number two. And we dwell on those at times. We need to get over them, get past them, right? Um, does anybody know who... Um, Joseph Scriven is? What's his last name? Scriven, S C R I V E N. He was born in the uh, early to mid 1800s in Dublin to a rich Catholic family, Dublin, Ireland. And um, did all the Catholic things or whatever. A preacher came around and, and told him about Jesus and he got converted and he got a little bit ostracized with his family. He was. He was about to get married, and um, disaster of disasters happened. His fiance uh, drowned the day before their wedding, and so it was pretty terrible. So he ended up he he moved to Canada around the area of Toronto and um, uh, went into ministry. And you figure you know things that are that bad can happen to you. You'd be bitter all your life. Uh, and Ira Sankey, who's, who was the first person to put together a hymnal, talked about this story about this man he met. And um, he was he was preaching in Toronto for a while, this man Ira Sankey. And so when they did, he lived in a house for a while. And, and he saw this man carrying a saw horse and a saw and said, Hey, I need that man to, to cut my wood for me. And this other guy says, you, you can't get him. He only does it for widows and and poor people. And um, it was Joseph Scriven. And um, uh, he was a, a lonely man who kept to himself, but he helped everybody out and, and had, had good ministry in the area. And they, they found um, when he died, there was uh, four verses he wrote in home structure to his mother. She was on her dying bed about 15 years earlier that he said. Um, and it was the only thing he ever wrote and they thought it was so good they put it to work, to the music and it's what a friend you have of Jesus. It's the only song he ever wrote. So if you can imagine a guy whose family probably ostracized him because he converted from Catholicism and said, oh yeah, how good is your dad? Your fiance died, you know and how people oppress others and things, but he must have put it past him because if you read the lines of the words again, about what a friend we are in Jesus. And isn't that... Uh, he must have overcome bitterness somehow and not clung on to it, right? So... He must have asked God for a solution to his issues, and that's all we have to do is ask, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's, that's number two of an issue we might have. Number three is lack of self-control, right? Mm -hmm. Thoughts and time I wrote down. What do you do with them? What do you dwell on when you have thoughts and time? Because those are a lot of the reasons why we lack self-control. A lot of times we think of the the issues that people have lack of self-control with, like like uh, gambling or drinking too much or um, porno or whatever. But but what is it? You know, we can do to keep keep that self-control. 
You know, it's, that's one of the items that Jesus was talking about in Paul, a lot of his writings. And so, it says, as a man thinks, so is he. There's a reason why it says that, because you need to, you need to choose what you're doing. Meditate on something else. Don't let circumstances control your life. Turn things around. So what? So then, based on whether it was any of those three, what did Mark need to do? So you can write down one, two, and three, because there's another three things. Okay? And this is from Chris. Um, <laughs> well, I wanted to be a in this early morning. Um, but... Number one, define the problem. Right? Number two, take action. And number three, never quit. So Mark needed, maybe someone needed to work with him and disciple with him. You know, what, what's your issue here? Why do you keep going back to Jerusalem when we need you to, you, know, you said you were going to come with us and go on ministry here. Um... Is your brother not taking care of your mom, or what's the issue here? We can help out. Um, or maybe, who knows, maybe he, had a, he just had to go watch the Ben-Hur horse races or something, you know, in <laughs> Jerusalem, and, and he couldn't go another month without watching who was winning. Um, you know, maybe he had a lack of self-control on something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, okay. all right. So once we go down a path, God's given us choices, right? Now, I don't know if anyone knew this, but Star Wars was on TV a couple weeks ago, and they showed the whole six series again, right? Right? And and the thing is all about this Anakin Skywalker, if you think about it, the Darth Vader guy, right? Okay? And and in the midst of it, you know, it, you know he... he uh, he says, he says, I'm afraid when he's in front of all the big disciple dudes or whatever they're called. Um, the Jedi Council. And the, the smart little puppet guy says, you know, fear leads to hate and hate leads to suffering. Well, there's some truth to that. You know, if you dwell on certain things, it's just going to take you down a path. So how do you reverse yourself? I don't know. The Bible talks about love, peace, and joy. There's a lot of threes in Scripture, if, if you read in the Scripture. And there's a reason why Jesus might have set them in those order, you know? Faith, hope, and love. Mm -hmm. Dwell on those things. David said what helped him out the most? He meditated on God's Word, right? That can help us get around circumstances, no matter what people are saying, you know, okay. you sinner, you know, you'll never be any good, you know, just, what does God have to say? All right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, where does your help come from? Mm -hmm. The Lord, right? All right, so write down one, two, three, <laughs> and this is why your help comes from the Lord. What are God's traits? All right? It's all the omni things. He's omniscient, right? He knows your problems. He knows what's going on. Even though Santa Claus does too. Um, he's omnipresent, right? He's everywhere. He's not over in Russia today, so he's ignoring America, so he doesn't know what your problem is. No, he knows every. He's everywhere, right? But. Most importantly, he's omnipotent, right? Mm -hmm. So he knows, he is, and he can. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why Jesus, or that's why when Moses went to the top, you know, he said, who, who, do, who do I tell these people you are? He says, I am that I am. He, he is that, that I am. He is present all the time. Mm -hmm. If we discount any one of those three things from God or people tell us, any of those three things like God can't do that for you, that then then we're in a wrong place, right? Right, right? Because then God can't help us, at least in our own mind. 
right, or we're taught wrong, yeah. or whatever. Thanks for tuning in to this week's message. Be sure to visit us online for more exciting content.